you believe that earnings uh, have bottomed out, uh, Madhav, and from here on they will only go better because uh, pretty much uh, the scenario that was painted uh, was far more bleaker than actually what the numbers came out, even in the last quarter. So there is a feeling that we probably haven't seen the worst. What's your view? Well, I think this quarter may be the worst. So I think markets look ahead three to six months. I think this is the low of the economic cycle. And, and listen, some of it is a question of write-offs. Some of it is a question of uh, you know, technical accounting for the banks. But I think largely for the cyclical Indian economy, the cycle and earnings have turned. So whether it's exactly this quarter or next quarter, I, I'm less concerned about. But I certainly think six months from now, we'll be looking at higher earnings. Twelve months from now, we'll be looking at substantially higher earnings. And some of it is definitely a function of uh, whether some of these reforms change. Because, again, don't forget, the down cycle we've had is not really a demand contraction cycle. The down cycles we've, we've had is a combination of two things. One is a global cycle turning down and the investment cycle in India turning down. The investment cycle turned down not necessarily because of absence of demand. It turned down because absolute lack of confidence and clarity or on rules of the road or where this country was going. And as, as those uh, uncertainties recede, I think you'll see the investment cycle pick up. And not just FDI, which is all we seem to talk about, but the domestic investment cycle, the government investment cycle, uh, will, will start kicking in. And, uh, you know, to what degree it gets, kicks in remains to be seen. But I'm convinced it's bottomed out. And I think you will see, uh, you know, you will see the rebound on that. And, and as always is the case, I think with markets in general, and to some extent India in particular, you know, we exaggerate both sides of the cycle. I mean, if, as you well remember, I mean, 2007 or 8, which is just four or five years ago, it was India shining. We could do absolutely no wrong. You know, China was going to be overtaken, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, four years later, the same country, 5,000-year-old country, you know, can't do anything right. And 4 or 5% is going to be the new normal. Uh, and the last year's, last five years' growth was a flash in the pan. I don't believe either of those... Uh, you know, peaks and troughs of uh, the India story. I think the truth is that, that the, the ingredients for growth that are in place are probably, in my mind, solved for a 7.5%, 8% trend, which is substantially higher than today's expectations and, and, and significantly lower than expectations of five years ago. And uh, I think when you get to India shining, you tend to forget all the complications of making a poor country, especially democratic, especially so heterogeneous, uh, moving forward. And when we get to such a low in sentiment and cycle, you forget what demographics can do. You forget what a 34, 35% savings rate does to economic growth. You forget what technological and financial proliferation and loan growth does to energize, motivate, and move forward a country. And on top of that, you layer uh, uh, things that we haven't heard for five years, whether it's privatization or a national investment board or FDI relaxation of, or backtracking or discarding of GAR, let alone uh, GST and DTC, and a bunch of reforms to come. I think people are totally underestimating that this country is entirely capable of going back to a 7.5%, 8% GDP growth trend. And that, by the way, I'm saying will be against a backdrop of the OECD having gone X growth for all practical purposes, China decelerating from extraordinary levels of multi-decade growth. So India will particularly stand out as an oasis of self-sustaining high demand with marginal positive changes in the environment, and that will look spectacularly attractive. I also think it will happen against a backdrop of inflation peaking and perhaps a cut or two on the interest rate cycle. Way too much has been made of that, in my opinion, but even that, I think, will be a slightly favorable backdrop over the next year and a half.